Hi, first grade. For math today, you are going to need a few things, so let me tell you. You will need your math workbook. You will need, if you have it, hopefully you do, fingers crossed, um, four pieces of plain white paper, like computer paper. So one, two, three, four. So if you have that, please grab it. If you don't have plain paper, but you have notebook paper or something, you can use that, that's fine. Uh, you will need a pencil and some sort of coloring thing like crayons or markers or colored pencils. Uh, you might need a stapler if you have one. You also might want to recruit your grown-up to, to use it when the time comes if, you, if staplers aren't your thing. Normally I would do that part for you just to be safe, but um, we'll get there when we get there. So, uh, great job finishing your Unit 6 test yesterday. And again, like we already started at our on our Tuesday Zoom, we are on Unit 7, which is all about time, measurement, and shapes. And we're starting with time. When I say time, I mean like telling time, like the time on the watch. What time is it? Ooh, that's my digital watch. So it's 1.49 right now. Uh, here we go. And we have our beautiful big watch here. Sorry, there's the reflection of my screen on it. Uh, and we kind of did a little review yesterday. <laughs> right now, you only need to know what I, what I need from you is to be able to tell the time to the hour. So whatever the hour is, meaning whatever the shorthand is pointing to. In some clocks, this hand is shorter and it's also a little bit fatter. Uh, in some cases, this one's going to be red and this one's blue, but not all clocks have a red hour hand and a blue minute hand, um, but oftentimes learning clocks do, which is why this one does. The clocks in your books do as well. So this short red hand, the hour hand. So right now my, well, my clock says, it says 8 o'clock. Technically it says 8.01, um, but just about, right? Just about 8 o'clock. So we are focused for today on telling tower telling out telling time to the hour to the hour so whenever this minute hand is up here that really means zero minutes now I know my clock here says 60 minutes because it also means 60 minutes I know nice and confusing for you right <clears throat> uh, but this minute hand when it goes around it every time it does its little tick boop that means one minute boop two minutes boop three minutes four minutes five minutes and every hour number, the one, the two, the three, has a multiple of five. So we really are starting with zero, but it ends on 60. So we have zero, five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, you know what, let me do this. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 slash zero minutes. So zero minutes means it's exactly on the hour. Um, this is an analog clock. You can say that word analog, analog. Actually, we probably shouldn't say analog right, like a robot because analog is kind of the opposite of digital. Digital means relating to technology. Um, and our analog clocks are, they're considered sort of old school, um, not technology related. Although there is a technology there, especially even if it's a wind up clock or something that doesn't necessarily have a battery, there is still sort of technology in place with the cogs and the um, what are those called? Uh, spirals. Coils. 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 Thank you. Uh, um, but in this case, when we see an old school clock like this with hands and a face, right? Remember those Martians? Um, we refer to this as analog time. Okay, looking at time and telling it by the hour and minutes. All right. So that's a clock. And what we're going to do is well, work through our math workbook. Sorry, I really need to put my phone on silent when I'm making these videos. It's very distracting. Uh, and you are going to go, we'll just get started. I'm going to stop blabbering and we can start. How about that? Please open your, your workbooks to page 200. Four two zero four. Um, 
This is the back of uh, the page that we did uh, when we were all together on Zoom. So when we were on Zoom, we did 203 and we just wrote the... Sorry, there's a motorcycle going by, it's very loud. Uh, we wrote the digital times according to these analog clocks. So they gave us the time on the analog, we wrote the digital time. Um, and on the back, or excuse me, on page 204, you're continuing that, but instead of writing the digital time, they've written the digital time for you. If you look at problem 11, it says 4 o'clock, problem 12 says 10 o'clock, problem 13 says 5 o'clock, and then 14 it says 8 o'clock. You can just read it by the numbers. We see the hour, we see the hour, a colon, okay, a colon is a little symbol that we use in time to separate the hours and the minutes. So we have the hours for colon zero minutes. So that means four o'clock, five o'clock, ten o'clock, and eight o'clock. But what it's asking you to do, it says draw the hour hand on the clock. So when you do this, I'm going to do it with a pen so that you can see. Um, when you do this, you need to make sure your hour hand is not as long as your minute hand. Otherwise, it's going to look like you've got two minute hands and it's going to make no sense. You can use a pencil for this. It doesn't have to be red. Uh, so let's do 11 o'clock. So go ahead and you have to figure out what, what number on the clock is my hour hand going to point to if my time is 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. I'm doing it now. You should be doing it too. Do, 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 do. Try to make sure it's also pointing if it at the correct number. Okay, if you, that's you have to be very specific. You can't really rush this because if you just slightly mess up your line, well then you might have five o'clock or three o'clock, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for four o'clock. Uh, go ahead, do numbers 12, 13, and 14. I'm going to do them too, and then you can compare it to mine. So we have 10 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock. My 8 o'clock, I fixed it. Close enough. So if you need to pause, if you're, if you're still working, pause the video, but I'm going to show you mine. They are all mine. 10 o'clock is pointing to 10, 8 o'clock is pointing to 8, and 5 o'clock is pointing to 5. Nice. That's not so hard. Telling time to the hour is, it's not so hard. It's, it's really not. And if it's still kind of hard for you, don't worry. We're going to do it a lot. So you'll get it eventually. All right. We are at the middle point of the page. Problem 15. We have our very special friend, Puzzled Penguin. Can you guess if Puzzle Penguin's correct or not? I know, he's usually wrong. Let's see. Look at the hour hand. Puzzled Penguin, oh, sorry. Look at the hour hand Puzzled Penguin drew. So he was given a digital date, a digital time, just like we were, and then he drew hand, the hour hand on the clock. Hmm. Is he correct? Let's see. The digital time says 3 o'clock. And what hour is his hour hand pointing to? That's right, it's pointing to the nine. Does the digital clock say nine? No, it says three. So is he correct? Eh. Sorry, Puzzle Penguin, you're wrong. So it says help Puzzle Penguin, you just need to draw the hour hand correctly. Do it. In a sense, Puzzle Penguin was close because he was pointing exactly to the opposite number, right? He was he was pointing across on the clock, but just the wrong way. Other way. So you should end up with your correct clock looking like that. Whew. Again, at any point, if you need me to slow down, just pause the video. Now we're moving on to something a little more fun, in my personal opinion. I'm not going to do the whole thing because it would take me forever and I don't want to do it forever but I'm going to show you what to do so you've completed page 204 and we are on page 205 at the top of this page says clocks for our busy day book now originally I would have us all make one together as a class but you're at home 
Your classmates are also at their homes, so you get to do this on your own. You're going to make your own, your own busy day book. And how it works is, the first, well, maybe we should make the, the layout of our book. So you will need a vessel for your book, which means you're going to have to make your own book. So now would be the time to grab those four pieces of paper. I have mine right here. You can see I've done this already because it's already folded. Um, make sure you have four. Okay. If they're a little bit smaller than this size, that's okay. It's These are kind of big. And you're going to put them together. Okay. Make sure they're nice and straight. And then you're going to be holding them the long way, right, vertical, and fold it in half. Now, again, I can show you. Okay. When we fold paper in half, make sure it's flat and you are going to pull one end and match it to the other end and then push down and then slide at the edges here okay cool so that's a that's a pretty legit way for me to show you what's on the paper here huh except then it will be upside down all right anyway uh thinking out loud so hopefully you have a book A book. Now, here's where the stapler comes in. If you have a stapler, uh, or your grown-up has a stapler, and you would like to use it, this is where I would take my stapler and the folded edge, the one that's connected, you just staple it. You could staple it twice or three times to make a book. I always start stapling it in the center. Okay, so I am. Let's see, let's see. So here's my book. Here's the middle, and then I want to staple it towards the center end. Great. So now I have a staple like that, and then I'll just do one more and another one. All right. So now we have a book. Woo! This is this is also good to know for when you just want to make your own book. Cool. Nice. Kind of like the size of a chapter book too. Ah, you should be. Hello. You should be able to open it up. And inside you'll have more pages than you need, actually. But that's because, well, I'll get to that when I get to it. Um, whenever I work with books like these, you probably noticed me doing it when we have reading groups. Um, I also, just so it's easier to fold, I'll bend it a little bit up right here. And I know it looked kind of funny, like it has an edge. But now when I go to open it, it's much easier for me to flatten the page. I'm not constantly struggling to flatten the page. So, life hack for Mrs. F. That's for you, Callista. Okay, we're on page 205. You've got a bunch of clocks and no directions. Thanks, workbook. Oh gosh, you know what else you need? Scissors, my bad. My scissors are right here, so I didn't even think about it. But you do need scissors. Obviously, as you can see, there are a lot of dotted lines and a lot of scissor symbols. Before you, before you go and cut every single clock out and make a mess, you're going to need to do this. You're going to need to rip this page out because nothing's on the side. Put your palm, put your palm flat on this side, using your thumb and your pincher. You're going to grab, and then. And you get a clean break. So please pull out your busy day clocks. And you'll have, so you, right now you should have this and this. Ta -da. Oh golly, this is a long video. Now, I lost my page. Okay, here it is. Now, all you need to do is on the cover. You're not going to write our busy day because this book is only about you. You're going to write my busy day. It's the title. Try and write it in the middle toward the top. Actually, it's your book. You could probably write it wherever you want as long as it's on the cover. Please make sure you don't do your book backwards, right? When you read a book, you want to be able to look at the title and then open it up, okay? Don't do that thing a lot of you did when we made our Christmas books where you wrote the title on the back and then you did your whole book backwards. <laughs> Go to the front, say, okay, if I were to open this like a regular book, my cover is going to go right here. So you're going to write the words, my busy day. 
Or you could even do, like for me, I would write Mrs. F's busy day. And you could do, you know, Kaylin's busy day, Jackson's busy day, uh, Noreen's busy day. So up to you. I'm going to do Mrs. F's busy day. If, and it's the title, so the letters, the first letters of each word need to be uppercase. And at the end of your name, if you're putting the S, right, to show that it's the day that belongs to you, you need an apostrophe S. Please don't forget it. Mrs. F's busy day. And at the bottom, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to write by Mrs. F. You could do this in pencil if you want to make sure you can erase for mistakes. I went ahead and did it in marker because, well, because I'm a grown-up and I don't make mistakes. Just kidding. I make mistakes all the time. I just, it's easier for you to see if I do it in marker. Okay. Our cover's done. We have the start of our book. What are we going to put inside? Well, it's called so-and-so's busy day or my busy day. And we have a bunch of clocks. So any guess as to how this might go? That's right. You're going to be making a book about the time of your day, like your, your, your daily schedule, essentially. So you are going to have to actually think about this one and figure out, okay, around this time, what do I normally do? So if you look at our clocks, they all have different times on them. They start with 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10, 11, 12, 1, sorry, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it goes from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. That means 7 in the morning to 6 at night. Now, here's the deal. Some of you aren't up at 7 o'clock anymore because our, our, our schedules have changed because we're at home. We are not rushing to get to school. So you can actually, because there's no a.m. or p.m. symbol, meaning there's no morning or night symbol, this 7 o'clock if we want, we can pretend that it's 7 o'clock at night. If you're still up at 7 o'clock at night, you can use it for a night part of your schedule. Okay? You can get creative. If you are still asleep at 8 o'clock, but at 8 o'clock you're still up at 8 o'clock at night, well, then you can use it as a night 8 o'clock. Okay? We're kind of not following the rules, but that's okay. So, when you, um, to start, open up your book, and you'll notice that we have... Well, we have, let's count by threes to see how many clocks we have. Three, six, nine, twelve clocks. So we've got twelve different hours to look at. But inside we have, I'm not going to do it on this, I'm not going to do this page because I can see my, I can see my title through it. So I'm going to start on this page. So I have one, two, three, ah, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, ugh, 12. And then I have one extra one extra page because I did skip the first one. Um, so you could even add another clock time if it's not on here, if you'd like. Or you could just draw an ending picture too. But you are going to be illustrating every page of this, so you might be tired. So I'm going to open up to my first page. Okay, so this is facing you, hopefully. It says Mrs. F's Busy Day by Mrs. F, and we're opened up. And so on my first, first page here, that's where I'm going to put my first clock. Now, in order to do that, I must figure out, well, when do I start my day? I do wake up at 7 o'clock still, so I'm going to cut out 7 o'clock. But if you don't wake up till 9 o'clock, um, then you can start at 9 o'clock. Okay, the choice is yours. As long as you use every clock. We haven't done a lot of cutting lately, and so this is a good activity for you to do. Again, cut one, do a page. Cut one, do a page. Do not cut all of these clocks out at once, because then you're going to have a bunch of clocks all over your space, and then your grown-up's going to put down a snack, and then you're going to, then the clock's going to go under the plate, and then you're going to go, wait, where's five o'clock? And then you're going to look all over, and you're going to go, I lost my five o'clock. Mom, you lost my 5 o'clock. And your mom's going to go, I didn't lose my, your 5 o'clock. You lost your 5 o'clock. And then she's going to lift up the plate and you're all going to go, oh my gosh, it was under the plate. So cut one clock, glue a clock. Oh my gosh, you also need glue. Guys, this is why I need to film all these videos in the morning because filming them in the afternoon, I am, whew, I've had too much coffee 
and I'm, and I'm already tired. So yeah. Thank you for being flexible and working with me. Oh gosh. Yeah, this is, yeah. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going, I'm getting outside. I promise. Okay. So you need a glue stick. Oh golly. Here's my glue stick. And if you don't have a glue stick, but you have, um, some sort of glue or even tape, if you could tape the clocks down, that works too. We're flexible. We're, we're learning from home. So I'm going to cut out the seven o'clock clock because that's the time that I wake up and that's how I start my day. And I am making a book about my busy day. So here I go. I'm cutting out my first clock. You just have to cut out on the lines. Do not worry about having, you don't have to cut out the circle of the clock. So it's easier to do it on the on the straight lines. However, if you are someone who really wants to cut out the circle clock to make it really fit in with your picture, that's fine. All right, I have my clock, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to turn it over, take some glue, a dot is a lot, and I'm gonna make sure, here's the top of my, uh, here's the top of my book, Make sure that the clock's the right direction. The 12 is always at the top. I'm going to put the clock at the top, okay? You can kind of pretend it's like a clock on your wall. And then underneath, you're gonna write the digital time. Sorry, I have to, I have to actually, I can't write that upside down, so I'm gonna do it right here. Uh, I'm gonna use a marker. You can use markers for this too. So I'm gonna write seven o'clock, all right? And then, I'm gonna draw what I'm doing at seven o'clock. I am usually, what am I doing at seven o'clock? Well, I'm, I'm just, I've just woken up, so I'm usually brushing my teeth. Um, I need a pencil for this because I wanna be able to erase if I need to. Um, you could do a far away picture, so your whole body and your sink, or you could even do just like an up close one with a toothbrush, right? Maybe that's what I'll do. So I always start. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is kind of hard to draw. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. And I'm trying to draw myself brushing my teeth. I really haven't drawn anything in a while, apparently, because this is hard. What did they have here? Okay, so maybe the top of my toothbrush. Um, and let's see. Thank you for being patient as I do this. Hopefully you were doing this along with me, but if not, you could get started so you're not sitting here all day waiting for Mrs. F to figure out how to draw a hand, which is very tricky, I admit. Okay, guys, this isn't my best, this isn't my best work of art, um, but it'll do for, it'll do for the, oh gosh, it'll do, it'll do for um, what we're working on. Okay, so. But uh so here I am brushing my teeth seven o'clock. Now I'll turn the page. And on this one, I'm gonna do the next time, which is eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, I'm dressed, I'm checking email. So I'm I draw myself at my computer, cut out my clock, glue it, write the digital di digital time, draw myself. You're gonna do that throughout the whole book for every clock. This is kind of neat because it is a math lesson, but it's also some cutting, some gluing, some more fine motor work, and some drawing, which is always fun, in my opinion. Um, and then when you're done, boom. If you can when you're done, it would be awesome for you to videotape um, yourself, like whoever, you know how you have Seesaw and maybe your grown-ups, I don't know if you use an iPad or the computer or a phone, but, um, if you could just show me a couple of the pages, like 
I'm Mrs. F and this is my seven o'clock. This is me brushing my teeth. That would be a really cool way to share it on Seesaw and then we could also put it on the blog which would be fun for your friends to see. But if you just want to take a picture of a couple of the pages, that's fine too. Whatever works for you. All right, and then when you finish that, what Mrs. F, there's more? There is, and it's because it's just more practicing time to the hour. It's the next page, page two, zero, seven, 207, excuse me. And it says, read the clock, write the time on the digital clock, and then draw the hour hand to show the time. So these are the two things you've already done. All the time is to the hour. So on this one, read the analog clock, write it digitally. On this one, read the digital time, write it on the analog clock or draw the hand on the analog clock. Okay, that's page 207. Woo, woo wee. So you're doing page 204. You're using page 205 to create your amazing book. Woo. And then you're finishing it off with page 207. And okay, one more because you can do it. Page 208, this one's cool. It says, fill in the numbers on the clock, choose an hour time, draw the hands to show the time. Literally, you're in these circles, you're gonna write the hours. So what's the hour that's always at the top? 12. So you would write 12, okay? That's the time that it ends on, and then we're gonna do one, two, three, fill them in, then pick a time, draw the hands appropriately, Write it digitally. You could even color in the clock if you'd like. Um, if you forget, wait, what does the clock look like? Turn the page of your workbook back to 201. It's right here. Pretty cool. Hopefully I explained that well enough. Um, thank you for working with me and being so flexible. Uh, great job on your math. That was a lot to do, but you got it done, so good for you. All right, great work. Bye.